Now, if you had to get out of here and you couldn't get out this door, you would just pull this cover off, and you see this red handle with some safety wire? You would get your fingers in there and pull it up. It breaks the wire, and that way the whole window can be shoved out, either, either window, okay? coming in to sail with us and we can't get the motor to turn on. We just sailed last week and everything worked fine. Check the spark plug, gas, whatever the three things are that you're supposed to check on the motor. And it almost sounds like it's gonna start but then it's not starting. So we're having fun. Not embarrassing at all. Yeah, so we put down all the sails and we were motoring. It was so rough. All by itself? Oh my God. Yeah, that's what kind of the, the worst we break in a barbarous and a scare stuff. Is there anything that needs to be clicked on the panel for the motor? No, that's it's all. It's all, yeah. Okay. So you guys it's like you're gonna keep this boat for two, three years and get rid of it and off to West Marine to buy a spark plug for the boat. So my niece's roommate's parents are in town visiting and they're sailors. So we were very excited to have them come and sail with us. And now the motor won't start. So we tried everything this 
I guess it might be the spark plug. I don't know. I have it in my purse now. I know I shouldn't be too ticked off about it because our plan to live on a boat, this is gonna happen time and time again, and I should get used to it. And I wouldn't be this mad or stressed out if it was just Donovan and I. But the fact that the motor decided to quit working when somebody drove an hour from Savannah to come sail with us, and now it's happening, sucks big time. It is what it is. It's not in my control other than having my wallet and hopefully once we get the new spark plug it'll start up. So update. Went to West Marine. They don't have the spark plugs that we need so I got the oil and went to Advanced Auto and they don't have the spark plugs that we need but they said that they have something comparable or compatible so I bought two of everything. Headed back to the marina and hoping to God that we can find something that works. But it is already 10 past 3 and we were really trying to get on the water uh, by 1. So we should have turned the motor on to warm it up or whatever while we were putting the sails on and taking the boat cover off and getting it all ready. And I actually thought about it at one point. I don't know what I was thinking about, but I thought we should turn the motor on and then. Who knows? I got sidetracked with something else and forgot. Lesson learned. Because they live in Minnesota, so it's not like they can come back anytime they want. Deep breath. When we live on a boat, things are going to break all the time. Hopefully, they're not going to break when we're expecting somebody, but I have a feeling it's going to happen even then, too. So just deal with it. It smells. It usually doesn't smell this much. Excuse me, it doesn't. Like I saw, right, it needs three things. It needs a spark, it needs gas, and it's it. So it's got gas, it's got a brand new spark plug, and the air part is that little ball that he's... Yeah, that's where the force is at the last one. But he doesn't even feel like he sounds like he's even firing. Brought luck, you brought us luck. Okay, now what are the chances that we're going to be able to start it back up when we're ready to come back? <laughs> Otherwise, you can tow us in. <laughs> oh, that's right. I forgot about the beans. We're sailing. We got the uh, spark plug changed and it took a couple of tries, but it finally, the motor turned on and
ready. We're ready, ho? Or some ready, ho? <laughs> no, or some jive, ho? Okay. You say ready. Ready. And then, then you want to do this one. You can just let this go for a minute. Yeah. because this was the most disastrous docking we've ever had in our life. We came in like we normally do, and the current was so strong that the boat was going that way, that way, that way, and we put our feet on that motor and that wood part of the dock to push off because the, I don't I I'm still nervous, I'm still shaking, I can't even form a sentence. Anyway, long story short, we couldn't get the boat back into the slip. This is the worst current we've ever seen. Now it's calmer, of course. So we ended up having to dock the boat, park it over there on the other side of that box, and then the very, very kind owners of this boat have lines that are, I don't know, hundreds of feet long. And we literally walked our boat on each finger and brought it back and parked it in here. And this is what it looks like. If I still drank alcohol, I would do a couple of shots right now and I'd be very happy. So yesterday was crazy. Today's another day, but we're not going sailing today. We came back to uh, check on our boat. Uh, so anyway, I was such a nervous wreck. It was really scary. That was a really, really, really strong current. Usually when we come into the slip, as soon as we pass the first pylon or piling or whatever those big wooden sticks are called, the water's like glass. There's no current. So we're able to go in and pivot and do, you know, going backwards into our slip. Here, the current just took us. I mean, it just took us at a little six horsepower motor. It's as if we didn't even have a motor at all. Donovan was finally able to get the boat all the way out and and then started backing up the boat and didn't realize I wasn't on it. <laughs> he left without me. I don't know where he went. He probably went talk to the harbor master because we called him yesterday and told him what happened. Anyway, the guy that helped us move the boat, we, we walked the boat basically four slips and in, back into our slip yesterday. And there's a man and his wife that helped us. And so we're bringing them some IPA beer. So no, there's no baby in the stroller and there's no doggy in the stroller. We've actually got some IPA for, <laughs> as a thank you to them for helping us. Oh, Lord, I'll have to get into more detail later, form, form my thoughts together to properly describe the events, which were crazy, but we didn't get any of it on video, obviously. We were all too busy trying to not crash into everything. So anyway. So we're looking for the boo-boos on the boat. And I think the only one is that one right there. So. You're ready for the cover? Okay. So I can't remember what all I was talking about yesterday because I couldn't really even form a sentence, but so this may be repetitive. Maybe I'll splice some of it out when I make the video, but we were at the worst possible time with the current when we came back. And that's basically because a couple of things. One, our motor was not working and it took about two and a half hours to get that resolved and a trip out to Marine West or West Marine or whatever it's called. So by the time we got out, I had already told our friends that were coming sailing with us that in the afternoon there was gonna be 15 knots uh, wind. So I would rather go earlier in the day, but we wasted two and a half hours on the motor. And then we thought, well, they're very experienced sailors. So let's go and if it gets bad, we can come back. So that's what we did. We only really sailed for about an hour. 
We tacked a couple of times. They gave us some really good pointers and then we came back, but there was white caps on all this water. Um, the current was heading in this direction. And usually when we come and we get to this first piling on pylon, whatever this thing's called, as soon as you pass it, all of that water's like glass. I mean, it just, the current stops but it didn't yesterday and the six horsepower motor just couldn't handle it. So usually we come in very close to these pylons, like very close to here. And then we go like this and then we back into our spot. But Donovan couldn't get the boat to stay on this side. It kept moving this way, of course, because that's the way the current's going. And so that's the boat over there where we put our feet out to save from hitting it. And then, I honestly don't know how, but it got stuck into that slip right there, the empty one. So that's when Gabriella and I jumped out because I thought, you know what? I don't know whose spot this is, but this is where we're gonna stay. And I was trying to get the line around that cleat there in the corner, right there, and just leave the boat there. But then it kept moving this way. <laughs> So by that time, Gabriella was able to hop back on the boat from that pier because we were both standing right there trying to attach it to that cleat. She was able to jump back on the boat. I wasn't, I wasn't fast enough. So they started going that way. I ran down all the way to the end and came back over here. And then the incredibly super duper nice and very experienced gentleman that owns this beautiful boat came out with his old main sheets hundreds of feet long. I don't even know. Hundreds of feet long. And so we told Donovan to come and dock here. There's already some fenders, so it was perfect. And we attached our lines to these cleats. And then we tied his main sheet line to the bow of our boat. Two of them, two main sheet lines. And then we slowly let the boat go because the current was taking it for us. And then we stood here and held one line. And then we threw the other main sheet to the person over there and then they pulled on their main sheet while we were very slowly letting go of this one and walked the boat that way so the bow was facing this way and the stern was facing that way the way the current was and then we just did it over and over again every finger so the person that was standing here we ran to the next finger all the way over there and then the person over here passed the main sheet threw it to that person over there <laughs> and we walked the boat back so normally we back into our slip but this time we were like, nope, we're gonna just get it in there with the bow first and bow, bow, wow, sorry. I'm in a good mood today, I wasn't yesterday. So we put it in front first. Actually, I think it's actually better to put it this way because the motor doesn't hit against anything over here. The trick is gonna be getting out of here going backwards the next time we take the boat out, backing up over there and then going this way. I think it's, as long as the water is like this, without really any movement, I think we're good. What's that? Is that coming on? So I think it might end up being better that we pull in first. So that was our experience. And after everything that happened, um, they're underneath Zoe in that basket. Good. After everything that happened, Donovan was beating himself up over it. And He's been told by several people, including one of the guys that works here, who also had the same problem with his motorboat. He's been told by many people that there was no way a six horsepower motor was gonna make it, so. What? Under Zoe. With the lock, probably still in the lock. So our big main mistake and our big learning opportunity for yesterday was that even though we had experienced sailors with us, that was fantastic for the actual sailing. We learned a ton, but we didn't pay attention to when we were gonna be returning and realized that it was at the point where the current was gonna be at the worst, at its worst. So anyway, it is what it is. It could have been worse. No insurance claims need to be filed, no damage. Well, we got a little bit of damage on ours, but the end of the world. We don't even have a pen to write anything. Well, it'll be the the secret Easter bunny brought them some beer. They'll never know. How do you feel about everything? I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. He was able to fix the spark plug himself, so that's good. He knew how to fix the motor, so that's one less thing he needs to learn when we own our next floating home.
the docking of the boat was beyond our control. What is under our control is checking what the current is like when we're leaving and coming and going. So here's the deal, guys. Sometimes things happen which are embarrassing. So be it. When we bought our per diem, we were warned by someone that a six horsepower motor would not be strong enough to handle the local waterways because of the currents. The previous owners had sailed the boat around here, so we thought if they can do it, so can we. Well, although we've had a few mishaps getting in and out of our sleep, <coughs> beep, 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 getting out of our slip, they've never been bad enough to cause damage to anyone or anything. Just our pride. This time it was different though. Pay attention to tide and currents before leaving your marina. When you come back, don't try to pull right in. Look around, plan your entry, and if it's a miss, turn away, regroup, and start over. Do not try to avoid a collision with anything by using any of your limbs. Even after playing pinball with our boat that weekend, we've had a few more mishaps since. It just takes practice. Anyway, I'm almost done with our next video, which is about our seven day ASA class in Florida. So stay tuned, subscribe, hit the little bell button, and you'll know when it comes out. That class was freaking amazing. All right then, ciao.